All right, y'all, it's notes time. Today, we're gonna to continue our probability talk as we talk about compound events. Um, by the end of the day, you will be able to find probabilities of mutually exclusive, overlapping, independent, and dependent events. Let's get started. So first, we say that two events are independent if they are not Hold on, independent. Okay, they are independent if they are, ready? Not dependent. Ah, okay, Um, that is one event doesn't affect the other event. The, um, for example, like flipping a coin and then doing it again. So flipping a coin twice, that doesn't affect the second coin flip. If you got heads the first time, you can just as easily get heads or tails the next time. That doesn't change it. They are independent. However, there are some events that are dependent, which means they depend on each other. Oh, Rather, one event does affect the probability of another event. That's like if you have this, this little bag of things, of, of little marbles, right? And you pull a marble out but you don't replace it. Um, so we are going to look at some examples of how that works. Um, so the probability of... So independent and dependent are important when we're asking you a probability question that includes and. Find the probability of doing this and that. So if they are independent events, they don't change each other, the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. If they're independent events. So for example, the probability of rolling a four and then rolling an odd number, that they, that's not gonna change each other. Um, so that's going to be the probability of rolling a four, which is one six, times the probability of rolling an odd number, which is three six. So the probability of that is three thirty six, <laughs> which is one twelve. Okay. Now if A and B are dependent events, then you find the probability of, okay, the probability of B, A, 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 B, <clears throat> is B times A times the probability of B after A. So the probability of finding B after A has been executed. That's a bad word, but that's the right word. Okay, so let's jump into an example. If you roll two six-sided die, What's the probability you roll a three on the first and then an even number on the second? Well, that's going to be independent because they don't affect each other. So that would be the probability of rolling a three. And, oh, I, I got ahead of myself. I'm so sorry. Um, the probability of rolling a three and uh, not be and uh, even is the probability of rolling a three times the probability of rolling an even number, which is one sixth times three sixths. Oh, hey, this is the same as my example. Uh, I get three thirty six. This is one twelfth. Cool beans. Okay, that was exciting. Did the same example twice. Um, I'm going to make up for you an example of dependent events. Let's say that you have, you know, you've got a bag of dice, not of dice, you've got a bag of marbles, um, and in your marble you've got two blue guys, oh that's way too big, um, you've got two blue guys and you've got three red guys. So the probability, and you pull one out, but you don't put it back. So the probability of pulling a red one and then a blue one 
is the probability of um, the probability of red times the probability of pulling a blue when a red is already gone. So on your first pick, the probability of pulling a red is three fifths. And on your second pick, after you pull a red guy out, the probability, oh, I'm, we didn't just delete him from existence. What? Come on, man. This is supposed to be a short lesson. Okay, we pull a red marble out. Okay, nice. Then the probability of pulling a blue marble is now two fourths. So we get six twentieths, which is three tenths. There you go. All right, so definition, this is something I use in like conversations a lot. Um, two events that can't happen at the same time. Um, so if it can't happen, we say exclusive. Or if it's like only for one person. Um, and then because there's two of them, we say mutually exclusive. They can't happen together. For example, you can't roll a two and roll an odd combine those roll and odd on the same roll that's not gonna happen because two is not odd so what's the probability of rolling it or uh, we're just going with mutually exclusive aren't we um can we roll a two and a three at the same time no those are mutually exclusive can we roll an even number and a multiple of three at the same time well, remember, even numbers are two, four, six on a on a six-sided die. Uh, multiples of three on a six-sided die are three and six. Oh, hey, we do have something in common. So they are not mutually exclusive. Super duper. If you like pictures, um, you can say like this of all your even numbers. There's two, there's four, and there's six. And of your multiples of three, that there's three and six, and lo and behold, six is in the middle. Okay, so those are and guys. What's the probability of doing this and that? Now let's talk about our or guys. Our or guys are going to have greater probabilities. Oh, because, oh dear. We say the probability of something or something else happening, we get to add them together. So the probability of event A or event B is the probability of event A plus the probability of event B. That's so good. For example, the probability of rolling, you know, a two or a four in, in one roll is the probability of rolling a two plus the probability of rolling a four, which is one sixth plus one sixth which is two six, which is one third. Cool. So I just want a two or a four. That's awesome. Okay, let's do, let's do another one. Um, what's the probability of rolling a two or a, mm, a, a, a multiple, uh, even number? Yeah, let's do that. What's the probability of rolling a two or an even number? Well, it's the probability of rolling a two and the probability of rolling it even. And remember, um, two, there's just one way to roll a two. And for even number, there's three ways to roll a two. Three. <laughs> so that would be four, six, right? <gasps> Wrong. Oh no, why? Because let's look at this logically. If we have six options on our dice, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. What will satisfy this condition? It's a two or it's even. There are only three ways we can do this. That should be three out of six. So what's wrong with our definition? Well, here what's wrong with our definition is that two is even, but these are not mutually exclusive. You can have this happen at the same time, yikes. So if it works with Mutually exclusive events, we can leave it alone. If you have mutually exclusive events, then that worked out. Wait, what did we say mutually exclusive was? 
Mm, that was a previous note. Okay, just kidding. Um, if two events are mutually exclusive, then you just add up their probabilities. That's easy. But if they both can happen at the same time, if they're not mutually exclusive, then we need to subtract the probability that it happens at the same time. For example, um, the probability that you roll a two and an even number, the, which is, you know, you get a two, you need to take away one of your two rolls. So we subtract P, A, and B, so the probability of both. So we needed to subtract. There's only one way that that will happen, and that will give us our actual 3, 6, which is one half. Isn't that so cool? Love probability. Okay, so let's do example two. Find the probability of rolling a 6 or an even number on a 6-sided die. So if I were to make a list of all the numbers that would work for that, um, oops, one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, um, the probability of rolling a six, there's one condition that will meet that. Cool. Um, or of rolling an even number. There are three numbers that will meet that. So the probability should be equal to three, six, which is one half. Now to calculate it out, these are, remember, these are, these are not mutually exclusive, so we need to go with our first option. So the probability of rolling a 6 or an even number, when you add them up, probability of 6 or even minus probability of both. So that will give us 1 sixth plus 3 sixth minus 1 sixth, which is 3 sixths, which is half. Now let's do it again. Let's look at our sample space of rolling a six or an odd number on a set of die. So we're still going with, I shouldn't have gone with blue, should I? Mm, there we go, that'll work. Um, so the probability of rolling a six, which is this guy, or of rolling an odd number which will be this guy on a six-sided day. One, three, five, six. So the favorable outcomes we have are four. There are four outcomes of six that will meet this. Awesome. Um, so that'll be two-thirds probability. But let's do the math. Let's see if this works out. So because they are mutually exclusive, you cannot roll a six and an odd number at the same time. The probability of six or odd is probability of 6 plus probability of odd, which is 1 sixth plus 3 sixth, which is 4 sixth, which is 2 thirds. Love it. Key idea. Key idea. Um, and a key idea up here as well. Have a wonderful time in your homework.